Hey everyone, it's Maria here. Welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to show you what my AM skincare routine looks like and then I'm going to proceed to do a little bit of makeup. This is usually what I have enough time to get on in the morning before running out to do errands and run my business. So if you want to see what you actually need to put on your skin. If you're in your mid 40s like myself, you have uh, maybe limited time to get the stuff on that really matter. So I'm gonna share with you what my must haves are for my AM routine and add a little bit of makeup to get on with my day. So let's get to it. Okay, so the very first step um, of my AM skincare routine is to hydrate my skin a little bit. So because I don't always have a shower in the morning, I wake up and, you know, my skin is dry and I want to just, you know, either splash a little bit of water on my skin to wake me up or what I do, and this is my favorite, my favorite tip for the morning, is that I go in with a hydrosol. Now, these can come in a variety of, you know, scents because of the hydrosol they have, depending on the flower that they use or the plant, or it could be aloe vera. So they come in a variety of, you know, different um, sensory experiences, but you need to find one that uh, I guess works for you. And I love this one uh, here by Helena Lane. It's the Rose and Frankincense. I find that frankincense is very grounding for me. And I love the fact that um, Helena Lane uses um, just amazing certified organic ingredients such as Bulgarian rose, hydrosol, blood orange hydrosol, and then a frankincense hydrosol. So I just usually, you know, give it a little shake and I hydrate my skin. Now, if you are someone who always showers in the morning, you can just, you know, wash your face in the morning in the shower. And what I mean by that, when I say washing, is not, uh, you know, getting a, a lot of soap on it or a really strong cleanser, but just to splash it with some water. I actually do not wash my skin in the morning. I don't really feel like it needs it, but in order for all your other skincare to work really well, be absorbed and penetrate the skin, your skin needs to be damp. So you need to do that in the best way that, you know, works for you. So for me, you know, yeah, sometimes if I'm feeling really groggy, I will splash water in my face. Otherwise, I love doing this with a hydrosol. Now, if you are someone who showers and is in the shower, okay, so that takes care of the, of the washing of your skin, you know, with just some lukewarm water when you're in there, try to turn it down so it's not super hot on your face. When you come out, when you're moisturizing, you know, your body or you're, you know, drying off, at that point, your skin might actually dry again by the time you get to your skincare. So having one of these is always really handy. Otherwise, you know, you can always just splash some water on your face to bring the uh, dampness and the hydration um, in that way back to your skin. So I go into the mist. And I love this for hydration, but I also love it for a quick cleanse. You know, you can use a little cotton round. Uh, it can be disposable. But if you're looking to grab um, a set of these that you don't have to throw out every time, we have this adorable little bamboo, you know, set in the store. It comes with the laundry bag and it gives you the little cotton rounds inside. These are so handy for so many different uses for, you know, removing your cleanser. Sometimes I, I wet them and I remove my oily cleanser with that if I don't feel like using a face cloth. They're just so handy to have. So if you don't have anything like this, you know, this is from the brand, The Future is Bamboo. And these little guys are the starter kit. So they give you the uh, bamboo charcoal facial rounds. And there are 14 in there that can get you definitely through a couple of weeks, okay, depending on how you use them. Perfect. So after you've dampened your skin with the hydrosol, you're going to go in with your cotton round and you're going to, you know, you can do this and freshen up the skin if you feel like, you know, removing the skincare from the night. I mean, that stuff is absorbed. It, it was sitting there all night. It's absorbed um, off your skin. But if that, you know, makes you feel better, helps, you know, make you feel like your skin is cleansed, I would do that with a hydrosol. It's such a quick way, you know, sometimes we wake up in the morning and we, we don't shower. We might have had a bath the previous night. So this is such a quick way to cleanse the skin and hydrate. 
So the next thing that you want to do, so this would be my number two, is to bring in a serum. Now, a serum can change depending on your concerns. For myself, who's in her mid fifty, uh, mid, my goodness, mid forties. <laughs> okay, I'm in my mid forties. Um, vitamin C is definitely my serum of choice. So I have other hydrating serums that I've used over time, but I always ask myself, like, what else can they be giving my skin? I don't want to be using twenty serums or something like that in the morning. So I need to make sure that I'm using something that also delivers some vitamin C, it delivers some hydration, you know, plumping. That's why vitamin C is my go-to for the morning. I'll talk about my night routine in another video. So the vitamin C, this one here is by Consonant, and this one here offers um, two stable and tolerable uh, sources of vitamin C. Okay, so I, I took some notes so I can remember the numbers. So it offers 10% of the sodium ascorbyl phosphate and also um, 0.7 aminopropyl ascorbyl phosphate. And then it has the licorice extract, which actually helps boost the power of the vitamin C. Now, I did some research into vitamin C and I'm sure you've heard that it can be a little bit irritating. So it's not something that everybody can use. I've tried a few different ones um, in the past, but I wanted to bring something into my shop that would be uh, okay for, you know, most people to use and it's not going to irritate. Sometimes when we get into our mid forties, into that perimenopausal, menopausal stage um, of our lives, the skin can get a little bit more sensitive and I don't want to cross out and rule out vitamin C for everyone um, who has a little bit more sensitive skin. So this is where the consonant uh, vitamin C comes in. So this one here, I give it a little bit of a shake and then I try to apply it right away on damp skin. So after the misting, um, you know, right away while the skin is still damp, I'm going to go in and I'm going to apply, you know, some drops here. You can do it directly on your skin and then I'm going to massage it into my face and I'm going to avoid the eye area. Now, because I'm avoiding the eye area, it doesn't mean that I avoid the neck area. So you're going to apply it everywhere. It feels really beautiful on. It's super light um, and nice and hydrating. It doesn't smell like anything, which is something I love. Sometimes vitamin C serums can kind of smell like hot dogs. I don't know if, you, if you've noticed that. Now, this is a clean brand. It doesn't really, you know, have anything in there to, to give it a scent. But there could be other vitamin Cs that maybe you've tested that you did not... Um, you know, really, really like the scent. So this one here, I just kind of tap it and let it absorb. The other thing that you need to know about vitamin C is that the amounts that are in here, the 10% especially, I did some research and that's considered a moderate strength of vitamin C. So if it's a moderate strength of vitamin C, it means that the tingling, uh, the possibility of tingling is going to be really low. But always I say, you know, to people, try to do a little like patch test and also know that in my store, we always sell samples. So if you place an order and you want to have uh, a sample of this, you just go into the sample um, area of the website and you add the number of samples that you want uh, into your cart. And then you can actually try it and see if you like it before you use it. And that's really important, especially uh, if you don't want to be buying the full size, if you know you're sensitive and the skin has reacted in the past, all right? So even if you get your little sample, always do a little, uh, a little test here on the side, do a little patch test and see how your skin reacts to it. But so far with all my clients that have been using this, there haven't been any issues. Now, a little bit more about vitamin C and why do you need it? I've done some other videos um, about the menopausal skincare that you need um, when when you hit that stage in your life but pretty much vitamin c is a powerful antioxidant and it helps to brighten the skin it helps to boost elasticity it helps with collagen production and the um, ingredients that are in this one in particular so the sodium ascorbyl phosphate is an antioxidant that works deep to, to protect the skin from environmental stressors. So this is the, the best quality, I would say, of an antioxidant. So think pollution, um, pollution from the sun, the stressors, dust, anything out there that actually works to harm your skin. The second one that's in there, the aminopropyl ascorbyl phosphate, works on the skin's surface to brighten and even the skin tone. So one of them goes deeper um, for the you know deeper damage and protection of our skin, and the other one works a little bit more onto the surface. And then the licorice extract that I mentioned was in there works synergistically with the two um, vitamin C derivatives 
to reduce the appearance of dark spots and visible sun damage, which is definitely a concern that you can have when you are, um, you know, in your, you know, mid forties, beginning forties, you know, fifties, uh, and you start kind of seeing everything coming up onto your skin from the lifestyle that you had when you were younger. Now, the next thing that you would need to bring on in would be a really good moisturizer. Now, your moisturizer can be just a moisturizer that makes your skin feel good, right? That kind of um, helps um, deeper, do a deeper hydration, kind of helps like lock in um, everything on your skin. But what I think, again, is that you need to have something that is doing a couple of different things because you also need to get SPF on there. So if you have a moisturizer at home that you love and it's just your moisturizer, that is amazing. Keep using that. But if you know you're going to go outside, you need to have an SPF. And if you are someone who's very active summer and winter, you might want to have a moisturizer with SPF all in one. Now, the predominantly thing here is that the moisturizer has to be a moisturizer first. I find that a lot of SPF creams or I guess SPF products do not feel the best on the skin and they don't do the everything else that the moisturizer does. For example, like, so what do I mean here? So let's look at these two moisturizers by Graydon, okay? So I have the Berry Rich, which is a probiotic moisturizer packed with antioxidants from Canadian berries. And I also have the Phytoclear. This one here has two different forms of retinol. I don't usually find an SPF product that does, um, you know, or gives, I should say to the skin, what products like this would give, right? I always say have a great moisturizer on hand, and then add into your routine an SPF. Now, if you are a minimalist and you kind of want to have it all in one, I cannot recommend the Helena Lane sun creams enough. These ones here are super rich, made with organic ingredients. I love these because if you actually have super dry skin and skin that's sensitive, you can actually have this really nourishing moisturizer that actually has um, a mineral SPF equivalent to about 30. So this is a fantastic way to bring, um, you know, both of the, you know, the moisture and the SPF together. It smells, this one smells divine. It's the lemongrass and lavender. And I love this product so much. I find it a little bit difficult to travel with it because um, it will melt. It's completely waterless and it will make, melt in hot weather. But if you are someone who skis, walks their dog, is out at the park a lot, summer and winter, something like this would be amazing. And it gives you all those nourishing ingredients. It's made with um, shea butter, jojoba. The jojoba oil is infused with calendula flowers, which is fantastic for the skin, and chamomile flowers. It also has avocado. It contains beeswax, so it's not vegan. And um, it also has, of course, the zinc oxide, the lemongrass and the lavender essential oils, which are fantastic in the summer for bugs, as I understand it, but it also comes in unscented. So there is a way to cut back. You know, I've done a lot of videos about minimalism um, when it comes to beauty. So something like this is phenomenal. Now, if you are someone who wants to have something more nourishing, um, that is just an, a moisturizer that you can use actually uh, day time and night time the berry rich by Graydon is a beautiful hydrating moisturizer this year the color comes from uh, blue green algae so it has fantastic ingredients if you know Graydon you know that she always packs um, you know all her products with phenomenal ingredients it smells amazing this one is rich this one would be if i say if you have a drier skin year round it would be great but if you are someone who is craving something a little bit lighter the phyto clear would be a wonderful option and this one here is a gel like cream so super light super quick absorbing. But what I love about this one is the retinol. And this is botanical retinol. These are the ingredients now that mimic uh, red, the effects of retinol. So in this case, it's the bacuchiol and the moth bean extract. And the beautiful thing about this is that if I was using a, rec a regular retinol vitamin A, I wouldn't be putting it on top of my vitamin C. I wouldn't be going in the sun with it. I would be leaving it for my PM regimen. But when you're using a product like this, you can definitely have this be your moisturizer, this be your retinol cream, and you just apply it on the skin on top of your vitamin C product. Now, there's been a lot of other chats out there about the fact of not needing an eye cream. And 
here's what I think about that. So a lot of the great and um, moisturizers, for example, it says that it's like it can be used on the, on the face and eyes. So if you have a product like this that you know is specifically created for the eye area, then that's fantastic. The Berry Rich here is a probiotic cream that is for the face and the eyes. So you, you know it's safe to use it around the eyes. I think the, the problem with a lot of the moisturizers is that they contain a lot of ingredients. So of course, we're using clean products today from uh, Green Beauty lines. But if you don't actually know and have a great idea of everything that's in that moisturizer, I would be a little bit cautious using it around the delicate and thin eye area. So if you love the moisturizer, use it. You know, don't forget to bring it down to the neck get your entire face, get the back of your hands. However, when it comes to the eye area, if there is synthetic perfume in there, if there's any other ingredients that can be a little bit more irritating, perhaps you did not feel that on the rest of your face, but you might feel that around your eye area. And I find that if we, when we get towards the perimenopause and menopausal stage of our lives that our skin does become more sensitive and the eyes become more sensitive as well and more discerning. I've had so many clients tell me that they were using a pencil or mascara and they've used it for 10 years, 20 years, but now that they've hit this stage in their lives, it actually bothers them. It started bothering them. Did you change anything else? No, I didn't change anything else. So it's not that the product um, has changed. It's, you know, it could be that our skin our eye area is changing along with the hormones when we get to that stage. So I would recommend to have a separate eye cream. The reason for that is that the eye creams are made with more delicate ingredients. There's no synthetic perfume and even essential oils. I love essential oils. However, around the eye area, I have sometimes found them irritating. So pick up a little eye cream, use a tiny amount. I split it between my two ring fingers and then I go and I just kind of pat it around the eye area, give it a little massage, and then I bring it up on the top, right? Don't forget the, the top part of your eyes. And just um, try not to get it, I guess, too, too close. Uh, products have a way of finding their way into the eyes. So I would just kind of massage the eye area, but you definitely want to bring it above. And in the morning, when you do that, you want to give it um, you know, a delicate pat, make sure that it absorbs really well before you start doing your makeup. Because if that cream has not absorbed and you start moving it around with foundation, it's definitely going to end up inside your eyes. So the eye cream that I used here is by Cocoon Apothecary, which is a Canadian brand out of Kitchener. The smell is light and herbal, and it smells like that just from the ingredients that are in the cream. There's no other scent added. So something like this would be fantastic. And the cost of this this is really, really great. It's about 35 and you just need such a small amount. I mean, you saw how tiny the pump was and, uh, um, you know, it was a very, very tiny amount. So you don't need a massive container for this. You don't need to be putting a lot of eye cream. You want to make sure that it's absorbed right into your skin. It doesn't go off on your pillowcase at night, etc. So the benefits of this is that it, it's super light. It's great for, for tired eyes. The puff helps reduce the puffiness. It firms and protects. It has uh, cornflower, hydrosol, rose hydrosol, argan, grapeseed oil, sweet almond oil, cocoa butter. So lots of really amazing ingredients, but the texture is not heavy. It's, it, I would say it's just enough for an eye cream. Okay, so we've done a light misting to cleanse and hydrate. We added our vitamin C, which is kind of our active serum for the daytime. We took care of the eye area separate, separately with the eye cream. We added a retinol moisturizer. So a moisturizer actually that delivers some anti-aging, um, you know, effects and also uh, collagen boosting, which is what uh, is amazing about retinol. So we've done all that. Skin is feeling great. Um, we are about to go step outside. So in this case, you do need to have an SPF. And I've heard people argue even when you're inside the house and in front of the screen that you should have an SPF on. Honestly, I don't do that, but I do have um, an SPF that I carry in my bag. So if I'm running out to go get my kids from the yard and it's a sunny day, I can kind of just like apply it. I know sometimes life gets super crazy. I'm applying it as I'm going down the street uh, to go meet them 
them at the school. So I have several different SPF creams in the store. Some of them are tinted, some of them are just in this pack, like we have um, the Helena Lane product. The one that I'm using uh, right now and I really like is the Just Sun. This product here is from Kelowna, British Columbia in Canada. Daily Defense Tinted Moisturizer. The reason it says tinted moisturizer is because it's going to come out and it's going to look like this. So a lot of the brands now, they give their SPF a slight um, skin tone, I guess off-white, beige, um, tint just so it can blend better because these are mineral SPFs, right? So the Just Sun contains both the zinc oxide and the titanium dioxide. The zinc oxide is about 10% and the titanium dioxide is 6%. So this one here has other amazing ingredients such as aloe vera juice, it has jojoba, it has shea butter as well, honeysuckle flower extract. So it's amazing for hydrating as well as protecting you from the sun and helping like revitalize the skin. I really like this formula, but I said the SPF is really, really personal. So I just want you to see what it looks like on the skin because I know that mineral sunscreen can be scary for some people. So you definitely want to apply enough. I would put about quarter of, of a teaspoon on my face and ears, bring it down to my neck. For the purpose of this video, I just want you to see how nicely it blends into the skin. And it gives this really nice kind of like luminosity. You see that? Like my skin is glowing. So, you know, remember that if you don't like this type of finish, you can go in with a mineral powder and flatten it out. But, um, you know, you definitely need to have your SPF on and, you know, with the physical block, which is what the minerals are, it's a little bit more forgiving. So if I'm running down the street and I'm applying it, you know, with the physical block, it protects you the minute it goes on. If you are using a chemical sunscreen, you need to give it about 15 minutes to absorb into the skin and then it's actually protecting you. So this one here is an SPF 30. I definitely recommend at least an SPF 30 for the skin for, you know, the best protection. It's a fantastic number. You don't need a 50, but if there's something that you love out there that's a 50, then of course put that on. Okay, and now that everything is on and your skin feels great, you can do a little quick makeup application. So I'm gonna go in with my Pura Nada Trusted Products, do a little bit of tinted moisturizer here to even out the skin tone. All I wanted to say is that the makeup doesn't have to take a lot of time and neither does the skincare. You just need to know exactly what your skin needs and apply those products onto your skin and run out the door. You know, we are all busy people. We have others to take care of and you don't have a lot of time to be doing skincare. I mean, at least I don't. So you just need to have those products that you know uh, your skin needs at your age and that you use to stay protected, to stay glowing for your skin to feel good. It's going with a bit of concealer and just to look, you know, awake in the morning. So that's where, you know, a lot of the makeup comes in. But also if your skin does not feel good or it doesn't look good, you're going to kind of go in and overcompensate with makeup. And that is not... Uh, the reason to wear makeup, you should be wearing it because it, you know, makes you feel good, makes you feel put together, polished. Just set this in place. So, you know, when I first started out, it was just all about how to get this stuff on. And that was kind of like the ongoing battle was how much time do I have to do my skincare and makeup? So makeup should be going on skin that feels amazing and is protected for the daytime. Let's add some color. This is Harriet by Purinata. This is the Lip and Cheek Rouge. Let's add some of this on the lips. Let's add a bit of brow color. All right, everyone, so the makeup is on, the skincare is on, it's all ready, it's all done. Didn't have to go crazy with too many products, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Please give it a thumbs up to help it rise to the top, and I'll catch you here with the next one.